الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على أول الخلق والعدد سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الأئمة المعصومين المنتجبين ولا سيما حجة الله في الأراضين روحي وأرواح المؤمنين لتراب مقدمه الفداء أما بعد فقد قال الله فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أفضل أعمال أمتي انتظار الفرج You may have attended many celebrations with, for the birth of the Imam Hajjallahu Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif I would like to utilize this half an hour for to 40 minutes to speak about the relation that we should have with our Imam Hajjallahu Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif So I'm not going down the route of his birth and the miracle of his birth how he was born and the things that took place at the time of his birth. Rather, we want to focus on as a Shia, what should be my role towards my Imam of time, Ajjallahu Ta'ala Farjaw Sharif. The narration I read before you is by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam. Well, Rasulullah says, the best deed of my nation is that they wait for the reappearance of the Imam. Afdalu a'malu ummati intidharu al-faraj. The best deed. Now, you people, mashallah, knowledgeable, you are raised in the majalis of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So you would know that this waiting of the Imam alayhi salam is not an idle waiting. I just sit back and say, okay, whenever Allah commands the Imam to come out, he will come out and then I just join the Imam. Rather, the Imam السلام, is looking for active people. As much as you can, whatever your field is, help the Imam السلام, in the best way possible. We also know that the Imam السلام, has many names. Two of his names, which you are familiar with, the Imam is Al-Muntadhar and Al-Muntadhir. Al-Muntadhar, the awaited one. We are waiting for the Imam salam. But he is also Al-Muntadhir, the one who is waiting. Other than the fact that he is waiting for Allah to command him, he is also waiting for his Shias to be ready for the appearance of the Imam salam. For it is unlike the time of Rasulullah, Rasulullah when he came, there was no foundation. Rasulullah had to lay the foundation and then he had to build on that foundation. The Imam السلام, now has millions of Shias worldwide. These Shias, if everyone was to do his part, that will pave the path for the Imam السلام, to come back. And rather than ha having to work so hard, he will have to do little work. Why? Because his Shias are helping him or they have already been helping the Imam السلام. So the love itself is not enough. This is something that we have always mentioned. Loving the Imam is one thing. Becoming what the Imam wants us is another. Allah in the Quran, when he tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى Not mahabba. Mahabba, if someone was to know Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam for what they really are, they will fall in love with them. But Allah wants mawadda. You have to have the following of Ahlul Bayt salam, imitating the lifestyle into how you live. Why? Why do I say this? Now, Karbala in itself is a huge lesson. Huge lesson. 
one day which lasted for since Fajr time until Asr, it has many graduates which teach people until the Day of Judgment. If we were to take only one example from the 72, we can guarantee ourselves that we will be on the straight path. Only one of them. For example, when Imam al-Hussein was approaching Kufa, one of the lovers of Ahlul Bayt by the name of Farazdaq, he was a poet. The Imam asks Farazdaq of the state of the people in Kufa. What is the state of the people in Kufa? Farazdaq says to the Imam السلام, would you like a lengthy answer or a summarized answer? He says, I would like a summarized answer. He gave him only four words which summarized the state of the people of Kufa, which you could also apply in today. What does he say? He says, Their hearts are with you. They love you, but their swords are against you. That is the case with many of us Shias today. We love the Imam alayhi salam, but how much am I doing for the reappearance of the Imam alayhi salam, which is by the name of al-mumahideen, those who pave the path. Mumahid is someone who paves the path. For example, if you call some people to come to your house, they are guests, you are the host. When you call them, do you expect them to bring everything with them and then they sit down in your house and then you all spend time together? Or do you get everything ready for them, for them to come and they will have everything ready? Which one would you choose? The second one. The same case is with the Imam salam. We should not wait for the Imam to come and bring everything with him. We are calling out the Imam salam, so we should pave the path for the Imam rather than him coming and making everything for us. So those people of Kufa, they loved Imam al Hussein but they did not have the recognition of the Imam. Loving the Imam is one thing, recognizing the Imam is another thing. And Rasulullah, very famous narration, even young people would know this, Rasulullah says, The one who dies without the recognition of the Imam of time, he dies what death? Jahiliya, the death of a jahil, ignorance. Notice the narration. It says, Man mata walam ya'rif. You have to have recognition of the Imam, السلام, not knowing. Okay, he is Al Mahdi. I know he is Al Mahdi. His mother is Narjis, his father is Al Askari. He was born in Samarra. And he, is a, he started with Ghaibat al Sumra, then there is Ghaibat al Kubra. We all know this. But the Imam doesn't want me just to know this. Rather, there has to be this connection with the Imam السلام, this recognition of the Imam السلام. Those people of Kufa, they knew who Hussein was. Were they able to recognize the Imam? They weren't. People who recognized the Imam, who were they? Those who were stood on the side of Abu Abdullah on the day of Ashura. It was late, but it was Better than never for Hur. Hur knew that Imam Hussein is Imam Haq. But when he recognized the Imam, he went with the Imam السلام. The same case for today. As a Shia, I know Imam Mahdi Ta'ala for the is there. But which side am I going to be on? Those people who went against Imam Hussein السلام, So just in case we don't want the history to be repeated, which it will. We just have to know which side I'm going to be on. Allah in the Quran. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa tilka al-ayyam nudawiluha bayna al-nas. Those days we repeat them amongst people. So the people of Kufa, what they had to go through, is going to be repeated again. We just have to choose which side we are going to be on. People who fought Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, were they Munafiqeen? Were they Mushrikeen? Were they Jews? Were they Christians? They were Muslims. There were people who would say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Yet, furthermore, they were not just Muslimin. 3,000 of the 30,000, so one-tenth of the army, they were Hafadatul Qur'an. 
the new Quran by heart. The new Quran by heart. Yet, Hafiz al Quran came to kill Natiq al Quran. Why? There was no recognition of the Imam of Time. If those people were Hafiz al Quran, like the Quran would want them to do, for example, Allah says in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not reflect upon the Qur'an? Or is it that the hearts have locks on them? Yes, you can read the Qur'an as much as you want. You can do hafiz of the Qur'an. Allah, not in one ayah in the Qur'an, though I'm not putting this thing uh, on the side, if you become a hafiz of the Qur'an, it's huge. It's a good merit that you can have in your life. But not one ayah in the Qur'an does Allah say, do the hifz of the Qur'an. Rather, he invites people to do what? أَفَلَا يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Do they not think? أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Directly now. Do you not think? أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Do they not reflect? So Allah is inviting us to do what? Reflect on the Qur'an. And the Qur'an of the time is two. <coughs> one is not the Qur'an, one is Sa Qur'an Samit. You have the Qur'an that you can read. And you have the Qur'an that explains the Qur'an, which is the Imam of time. Those people who memorize the Qur'an, have they not come across the ayah where Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّئِسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيْطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا أَهْلُ الْبَيْتِ was who? The same. Have they not come across, فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالُوا نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ أَبْنَاءَنَا The same. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ حُسَيْنٍ قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى قُرْبَى is حُسَيْنٍ Yet why did they come and fight the Imam alayhi salam? The Imam poses this question and he addresses them. The Imam alayhi salam, his job was to complete the hujjah. He asks them, why do you fight me? What was the reply? What did the, those people reply to the Imam alayhi salam? Why do you fight me? They said, We are hateful of your father. You know, if you go back to the battle of Uhud, the battle of Badr, the battle of Hunayn, all those battles, many of those people who were present in Karbala, their ancestors have been killed with Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. So we are here to take revenge. That's number one. But the Imam did not focus on this as much as he focused on the second part. He tells them then, I will tell you why you are fighting me. لِأَنَّ بُطُونَكُمْ مُلِئَتْ حَرَامًا Your stomachs have been filled with haram. You can see the Imam alayhi salam, but you cannot recognize the Imam. Say, Sheikh Bahjad, rahmatullahi alayhi, one of the warafa of the 21st century, he was asked, is it possible to see the Imam of time? Is it possible? He says, of course it's possible to see the Imam of time. Then he takes a pose. Then he says, Shimr was able to see the Imam of time, yet he went ahead and killed him. He saw the Imam. Seeing the Imam is not something special. Recognizing the Imam is what makes you special. Abbas alayhi salam, you know, whenever you read history, for example, if I, if I was to ask you, Name me a Shia from the time of Rasulullah. Who comes to your mind? Salman, Abadar, Malik al Ashtar, Qambar. These people who were the true Shias of Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein. Have you ever thought of Abbas, the son of Amir al Mu'mineen, as a true Shia? Or an example where we as Shias can look up to him and become a true Shia? I'll give you a few examples from the day of. Karbala, even before the day of Karbala, when did this Qafla leave Medina? 28th of Rajab, only a few weeks ago. They left Medina to go Mecca, from Mecca, they were going to Kufa, they were diverted to Karbala. Not one narrator, Imam Hussein alayhi salam had many brothers, he had many companions, they all came to him they asked the Imam, why do you go to Kufa knowing that these people betrayed your father and they betrayed your brother and they will betray you? Okay, if you have to go, why do you take your family with you? Why do you take your women? Why do you take your children with you? Go on your own. Everyone had to make a comment, statement, question. 
not one narrator would tell you that Abbas came and asked Imam Hussein this. Not one. What does that show you? Total submission to the Imam of time. If the Imam wants me to go, I will go. If the Imam wants me to sit, I will sit. If the Imam wants me to do anything, I will be there for him. He doesn't want me to do anything, I won't do anything. Take it back to the funeral of Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam. The ghira, the jealousy of Abbas alayhi salam, when he saw the people attacking the funeral of his brother, he took the sword out. What did Imam al-Hussain tell him? It is not your day, O oh Abbas. Yes? What did he say? Hussain, they are, they are fighting my brother, they're killing my brother. No. He did not say anything to the Imam of time. Submitted. Walid ibn Atba calls the Imam alayhi salam, tells him you have to pay allegiance to you. Yazid, Imam al Hussein does takbir, Allahu Akbar, Abbas comes in with his sword. Imam al Hussein tells him, It is not your day. He does not talk back to the Imam. Submission. On the day of Ashura, this is the day. Abbas was created for the day of Ashura. <coughs> Imam tells him, Go and get water for the children, not to fight. He doesn't tell Imam al Hussein, This is the day, O Abu Abdullah, I was promised for this day. Rather, he goes to get the water, which he never comes back. But did he ever ask the Imam or did he answer the Imam? He didn't. What does that show you? A Shia should be like Abbas. This wow. is one of the reasons you have a narration by Imam Mr. Jad alayhi salam. Where the Imam says, Inna li ammi al Abbas darajatan yawm al qiyamati. يَغْبِطُهُ عَلَيْهَا جَمِيعُ الشُّهَدَاء Imagine all the shuhada on the day of judgment, they will be envious of the daraja of the status that Abbas is given by Allah. Why? He's only 33 years of age. The quality that this man had. Take it back to Karbala. He comes to the river of Euphrates. He could have drunk from the water. Why doesn't he drink from the water? How can I quench my thirst? When my imam of time is thirsty, take it to your time now. How can I live a normal life not knowing what state is my imam in? This is what Abbas teaches me. How can you just live a normal life not knowing whether your imam is in good health, whether he needs protection, whether he's being uh, surrounded by enemies? We don't know. We don't know where the imam is. What state is he in? Do I mention the imam, السلام, do I pray for the imam? Do I give sadaqah for the protection of the Imam? This is what Abbas teaches you. Secondly, the, uh, Abbas he, re he reads few lines when he takes the water then he puts it back. What does he say? Ya nafsu min ba'da al-Husayni huni wa ba'dahu la kunti antakuni Notice the words of Abbas He doesn't say ya nafsi. Nafsi means myself. He says ya nafsu. So the self of the Shias of Ahlul Bayt. We all have self. He says, Min ba'dil Husayni huni. What is your worth after Hussein? The Hussein of your time is who? Imam al Mahdi. Lower yourself. You have no worth if you do not care of your Imam of time. Wow. Then, when it comes to the time of his martyrdom, imagine someone who is struck with an arrow in his eye, the other eye is covered with blood. And he has no arms to wipe the blood. Someone approaches him. He doesn't know who is approaching him. What does he tell him? He says, give me one moment to bid farewell to my brother Hussein. Imagine in that state that he's in, yet he wants to bid farewell to his imam of time. Do you think he, were, he, was, he had no pain whatsoever? No. His priority was Abu Abdullah al -Hussein. Is my priority like Abbas, my imam of time? This is Abbas <coughs> And look what he has gotten because of the care he had for the Imam of time. He, this is a recognition that the Imams wants us to have with our Imam Ajjallahu <coughs> Ta'ala So why are we away from that? Hubbud dunya. The foundation is the love of this dunya. And Imam, the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam, what does he tell us? The head of every mistake is the love of this dunya. 
once you fall into the love of this dunya, you will not be able to see the purpose that you are here for. You will have hopes, inshallah, by the age of this, I will have this. By the age of this, I will have this. I will have the, these assets. I will have this uh, car that I want to buy. I will have this house. Okay, which is good for you. But do not let this put a veil on your eyes for the purpose you are created for. Where are you from the Imam of Time, alayhi salam? Dua and nudba, very beautiful dua, which is meant to be read on what days? Eid, yes, Eid. What are the Eids that we have? Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Ghadir, and every Friday is a Eid. Four days. What does it mean, Dua and nudba? Just the name itself, what does it mean? Lamentation. Okay, what do you lament? What do you lament? What do you read? You read lamentation for the Imam of your time. Notice when do you read them? On the day that people are supposed to be happy. Why are you meant to lament your Imam on the days that you are meant to be happy? You are celebrating a day away from your Imam. A day when the Imam should be with you. If you want to read the dua, what do you say? We look forward to the day that we are surrounding you, O Imam. We are looking at you and you're looking back, back at us. Or one of the lines of how should you speak to the Imam he says, Azizun alayya an ara al-khalqa wa la tura. It is hard for me as a Shia, it is hard for me. I can see all the creation, but I cannot see you. This is the lover. If you have not come across the dua, if you have not read the translation, tomorrow's the day of Friday, Read it. Give it half an hour of your time. See this connection with your Imam. How should it be? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He says in a very thought provocative narration. If you want to leave everything you heard today, leave it on one side. This narration, engrave it in your mind. Leave it. Keep it as a heading that you lead your life with. Rasulullah says, "Ashadu min al yatim yutman, man qata'a an imam zaman." The state of someone who cuts himself from the imam of time is worse than the state of the orphan. Worst state than the orphan is the one who cuts his connection with imam of time. You're alive, you know he's there, you do not have that connection with him. You do not pray Allahumma kulli waliyyik al-hujjat ibn al-hasan in your prayers. You do not give sadaqah. You do not remember the imam in dua and nutba. You do not remember him in Thursday night. You do not remember on Friday. You've cut yourself from the imam alayhi salam. Now imagine if the imam was to come tomorrow, for example. How, what, how would I see the imam alayhi salam? What face am I going to show the imam alayhi salam? These are questions that I should ask myself every Friday. In fact, every day for a moment, he wakes up, he would say, Assalamu alaikum ya sahib al He is the wali of our ni'am. You know what that, what, what that means? The guardian of the blessing that you are blessed with. From the moment you are born until your death time and beyond, the guardian of your blessings is the Imam of Allah. Everything that Allah gives, Allah gives it through the Imam. If Allah takes hardships away from your life, it is because of the dua of the Imam alayhi salam. The Imam prays for you. Should he not get a small prayer from you and I at least once a day? What change should you bring? In your qunut, you know, salah is something that we have to do. Maybe mustahabs, sometimes we don't have the time for it. In your qunut, Allahumma kulli waliyyik al hujjat al 30 seconds of your life. But imagine when you pray for the Imam, the Imam prays back for you. And when the Imam prays back for you, Allah doesn't reject his dua. Notice, you know, you give something little, it comes back tenfold, if not more. Keep the Imam Ali Salam in your in your prayers. Imagine the loneliness of the Imam when he is alone, but he has Shias who remember him. How much joy does he have in his heart then? And when you bring a joy to the son of Fatima, that makes Fatima Ali Salam happy. So at least on the day of judgment, we can come forward and we say, Fatima, we did not abandon your son like people have done to your children. We can, we can do that. So why is it that we are far away from the Imam? Imam al Hussein has given them the reason. 
when you indulge in sins after sin after sin do you think you'll be able to see the nur of allah question no rhetorical question ask yourselves if i am someone who whenever there's a majlis um, i backbite i find it so normal now i'm someone who could not lower his gaze from haram i'm someone who doesn't really care what rizq i bring back home to feed my family i'm someone who lies i'm someone who accuses people I'm someone who breaks relationship, makes fitna. Is this what the Imam wants a Shia of his to be? And something I have always reminded myself and the mu'mineen of, Imam Salih says, Allah 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 The Imam says to his Shia, the good is good when it's done by someone else, but when you do it, it is better. Why? Because you are close to us, Ahlul Bayt. And bad is bad, but if you were to do that, it's worse. Why? Because you are close to us, Ahlul Bayt. Close to us, Ahlul Bayt. We, we have that relation between us and the Ahlul Bayt. I am a Shia of Ali. I am a Shia of Salih. I am Shia of Al Mahdi. So, how should my life be? imitation of how they want me to be. So Imam Hussein says, Haram, come forward to the day of when Zainab السلام, meets Yazid Al-Anatullahi in his court. How does she begin his, uh, how, how does she begin her sermon? What does she say? She brings an ayah from the Quran, which becomes the thought of a mu'min. How should I lead my life? What does she tell Yazid? ثُمَّ كَانَ عَاقِبَةَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا السُّوءَ أَنْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهُ وَكَانُوا بِهَا يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Then the outcome of the evil was evil. Why? Because they came to a point where they disbelief in the sign of Allah. أَسَاءُوا السُّوءَ Evil, evil, evil. You come to a point where you do not care about the Imam alayhi salam. The sign of Allah of your time is the Imam of time. Why do we get this far, far away from the Imam Ali Salam? Indulgence in sins. Sin upon sin upon sin. Now falling into a sin which we have spoken of last week briefly. Allah doesn't mind you if you were to fall or slip once. But if that slip becomes your habit, then that is a problem for Allah. Between you and Allah, the problem is not if you fall into sin once, twice. Okay, you have done tawbah. You, you've never gone back to it. The problem is when you keep doing that action, it becomes very easy in your eyes, yet in Allah's eyes, it's great. And Imam Ali has a narration. You know, we have Gunahan Sagina and Gunahan Kabira. The Imam says, even if it is a greater sin which you do continuously, it becomes great. Why? Because you're taking Allah's command lightly. Even something small becomes great because you have taken it light now. It doesn't mean anything to you. Okay, I'm uh, disobeying Allah. In a way, you're saying, okay, it's fine. Come to Dua Abu Hamza Samari, inshallah. In Ramadan, it's meant to be read in the time of Suhoor. But you can even read it throughout your life. You don't have to wait for Ramadan. The Imam alayhi salam explains why do people move away from Allah's mercy. Allah doesn't push them away. They push themselves through what? Actions. One of those, the Imam says, maybe you found me someone who is not modest in his privacy against you. Allah is watching, it's fine. I, can, I will carry on doing it, it's fine. As soon as someone else watches me, I stop doing it. Why? I have haya from the servant more than the creator. So who, whom, I have, whom I have, have I given more authority? To the creator, creation rather than the creator himself. This is why we move away from the time from the Imam of time alayhi salam. Now let's give you something practical. Something practical. You could ask yourself, how do I know how close I am to the Imam alayhi salam? Yes, question, how do I know if the Imam alayhi salam finds me someone who is close to him, someone far? I will give you a dua by the name of dua, Imam al-Hujjah, ajjalallahu ta'ala fajr al-Sharif. Type it in Google, look it up in Mufatih al-Jinan where the Imam himself is praying to Allah and he's praying collectively, oh, Allahumma, oh Allah, make us from those who obey you, make us from those who are far away from your sinning and 
and so on and so on. One statement, each statement take it as a box. So this one statement, box. Let's say they come up to 20, 30 boxes. Compare yourself against the dua of the Imam. The more boxes you take, the closer you're to the Imam. It's simple. It's not very hard. The more boxes you uncheck, that means you are further away from the Imam, which you will find yourself. You have to work towards these boxes. I'll give you a few lines, inshallah, from that dua, and then you can go ahead and read it in your own time. The Imam Ali's first statement in that dua, he prays to Allah, Allahumma rzuqna tawfiq at ta'a. O oh Allah, grant us the tawfiq, the opportunity of obeying you. Wow. If I am someone who obeys Allah, that's a checkbox, I am one step closer to the Imam Ali's As simple as this. Don't make it harder for yourself. The second one, wa ba'da al The Imam doesn't say not committing a sin far away from sinning. If I am someone who is far away from sinning, there you go, that's two boxes. Check that I am closer to the Imam Ali Salam. Notice the, the way the Imam puts them in order. If you were to follow it in order, for example, first you obey Allah, you stay away from the haram, then you can build on that foundation. Sidqinniya is that I have a true intention when I do things for you, O oh Allah. Anything I do in my life, I, I do it with true intention. For example, I stand up in salah. My salah is for the sake of him. Allah. Sometimes the riyah comes in. You know, shaitan comes in, okay, do some longer rik'ah, longer sujood, longer ruku'ah. People will say, mashallah. This niyyah is not sadiq anymore. Rather, I have to make this intention khalis lillah. It has to be for the sake of Allah and no one else. The second part, for example, Saum, which you have fasting. Now it is the day of fasting, you know, the month of Shaban, the month of Ramadan is coming. Just as a reminder for the Mu'mineen, the last three days of Shaban, which is, I think, a narration by Imam Sadiq or Imam Rada he says, whomsoever fasts the last three days of Shaban and joins them with Ramadan, he will get the thawab of fasting two months in a row. Just the fasting three days. So you are ready, you are preparing yourself for the month of Ramadan. Mustahab fasting, for example. Now, wajib everyone has to keep. Mustahab fasting. Why does Allah make, if you go back to the uh, khutbah of Sayyidah Fatima, السلام, she says that Allah has made fasting wajib for khulus, to make you sincere. Why? Every action of worship you do in your life, you you will do it in a way that everyone can see that you know you're praying you're doing hajj you're doing zakat you're, do, you're doing uh, you're giving khums or any any part of that you do in your life it is visible to other people except for what fasting if you were to fast no one will be able to tell that you're fasting except that if you go and tell them you know what i'm fasting today in fact islamically look how much thawab there is for someone not to reveal that he's fasting someone comes to him they offer him something, he said, thank you, I don't, I, I wouldn't like it. Rather than replying, oh, I'm fasting, I don't want it. Don't give it out the first moment you are questioned. You're offered something, tell them, I'm okay, thank you. If they insist, then you can tell them you're fasting. The thawab of someone, imagine, who goes to a house, be it your friend's house, be it your family house, and you do not tell them you're fasting. If you were to open your fast in their house, you will get the thawab of 100 years of fasting just because you did not reveal your fasting. This is the khulus. That Allah wants that. And there's a narration where Allah, Hadith al-Qudsi says, as li wa ana ajzibihi. Fasting is for me and I will reward for fasting. Allah himself will reward for fasting. Why? Because it's for him. It can stay hidden. When we say, or the Imam says, wa niya, everything I do in my life, let me do it for the sake of you. If I have that intention, there you go, that's three boxes. Check. الْحُرْمَ And knowing the sanctity of things. Hurma, everything has hurma in life. Allah has hurma, al bayt have hurma, the Quran have hurma, respect. Everything in your life has hurma. The more you respect the hurma of everything around you, 
the closer you are to Allah and the Imam alayhi salam. وَأَكْرِمْنَ بِالْهُدَى وَالْإِسْتِقَامَةِ And honor us. Imagine, how does the Imam see, on, how can someone become honorable? The Imam says, بِالْهُدَى By guidance and by staying firm on that guidance. That is something honorable. Allah in the Quran says, what is, according to the Quran, Surah Al-Hujarat, what is honor in the eyes of Allah? إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ the most honorable of you in the eyes of Allah is what? God conscious one. The more God consciousness you have, the closer you are to Allah and the Imam wasalam. Not someone who is wealthy, not someone who has a degree from the best of universities, not someone who comes from a Sayyid family or a non Sayyid family. It doesn't matter to Allah. You are a muttaqi, you are closer to Allah. And Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. As a narration, where again, it goes in the lines of taqwa, where the Imam السلام, says, Inna waliya Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi man ata'a Allah wa in ba'udat luhmatuh. The wali of Muhammad, the friend of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa is the one who obeys Allah even though he is far away from the Prophet, as in he's not related to him. وَإِنَّ عَدُوَّ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وآله مَنْ عَصَى اللَّهِ وَإِنْ قَرُبَتْ لُحْمَتُهُ And the enemy of the Prophet is the one who disobeys Allah even though he may be close to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله Maybe from the family of the Prophet but he disobeys Allah, the Prophet rejects him. Abu Lahab, example, the uncle of Rasulullah, the brother of Abu Talib. Look at the difference. Abu Talib on one hand, Abu Lahab is on the other. Who is closer to the Prophet? The one who obeys Allah, which was Abu Talib. Abu Lahab is far away from the Prophet. Salman, where does he come from? He comes all the way from Persia. He becomes Minna Ahl al Bayt. Why? Because he obeys Allah. There were people from within Mecca who sat next to Rasulullah, and Rasulullah calls them Munafiq according to the Quran. What does it mean? What, the taqwa of Allah is the key to the Ahl al Bayt. If you are a muttaqi, God conscious, you are closer to the Imam alayhi salam. And then the Imam says exactly what Imam al-Hussein says. وَطَهِّرْ بُطُونَنَا مِنَ الْحَرَامِ وَالْشُبُهَا Not just haram. And purify our stomachs from haram and that which is doubtable. Sometimes you doubt, especially living in the West. Sometimes you go to a place, you do not feel that, okay, they tell you it's halal. But you have these small doubts. A muttaqi is someone who even refrains from doubts, not just haram. You find it doubtable, eat something else. You don't have to consume that. And Allah in the Quran doesn't just tell you to eat halal. Allah says, وَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Not just halal, purified, clean. You know where does it come from. You know the source of what you're eating. Why? Because nothing has effect on your soul just like the food you eat. The food you eat, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, butunakum mulat haram. Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, purify our stomachs from eating haram. A narration by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi where he says, <laughs> a bite, how, how, how much is a bite? Small bite. Refraining from one bite of haram is better than offering 10,000 rikahs. Imagine, how long would it take you? I, we offer 17 rikahs a day. So in a month, we're offering around 410 rikahs. How many rikahs 10,000 be, would be equivalent to? Maybe two, three years of worship? That is on one side, refraining from one bite of haram is on the other. Why? The effect that it has on your soul, it will push you away even from worshiping Allah. Something that we may take like, especially the kids when they go, we have to be very careful, you know, when our kids go to shops, whatever they pick from there, it might be haram, it has gelatin, they just, they find it, okay, I saw a Muslim person eating it, it makes it haram. According to their understanding, a friend of mine, he's a Muslim, he gave it me, it becomes haram. Many people are careless. Many people are careless when it comes to eating. You, as a parent, have to be responsible for that. We as adults, when we go, not just anything we see, we pick it up and eat it. Though, yes, Allah wouldn't punish you. Something that you've done by mistake, but the effect of the haram will be there. 
the effect of that on my body, on my soul, it will be there. Why does it have so much effect? Because haram or whatever you eat, it becomes part of your body, part of your flesh. And that will move you away from worshiping Allah. For example, many mu'mineen even uh, from the people I've met, sometimes they come to me, for example, they have been doing Salatul Layl or Salatul Fajr con uh, like continuously. He goes out, he tells me, I went out for three days in a row. I could not wake up for Salatul Fajr. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Then I found out the place that I ate at, it was haram. So it's not that he wants to stay away from worshiping Allah. Haram forces you to go away from Allah. So imagine haram on haram on haram on haram, something that we mentioned even last Friday, Jum'ah. Uh, we have a narration, my man mata ala hubbi Muhammadin mata shahida. Whoever dies loving the Ahlul Bayt Ali Muhammad Muhammadu Ali Muhammad, they die as a shaheed. But is there any guarantee that they died on the love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad if they were indulging in haram? There's no guarantee. End of your life is the most difficult part of your life. If we think that this is difficult, fighting shaitan, time of death becomes even more difficult. Shaitan comes in front of you. You see your place, inshallah, in heaven. Some people see their place in hell. You see the angels. Everything becomes apparent to you the way it is. That becomes more difficult for you to make a choice. Some people, we don't know. We know them as Shia Zafar Muhammad Ali Muhammad. At the time of death, they become bura'a for Muhammad Ali Muhammad. They disconnect themselves from Muhammad Ali Muhammad. So does that mean he died as a shaheed now? Because actions speak louder at the time of death. The way I lead my life is the way I would die. And I brought an example from Surah, Surah Al-Hashr of a mu'min who was so close to Allah. Whenever he would pray to Allah, Allah would answer his dua. Whenever he would pray, Allah would answer his dua. At the time of his death, it's a long story, inshallah, sometime we will uh, read it from the Quran. At the time of his death, when he was being hanged, Shaitan came to him. Shaitan said, if you bow down to me, I will help you from being hanged. So you live. What does he do? He does sajda to him by sign. The moment he prostrated to Shaitan, he was hanged. And Allah says, him and the Shaitan are together in hellfire. He was a moment throughout his life. The moment he died only, the moment he died, he changed everything instantly. What is the guarantee of how I live my life? Then at the time of death, I expect to die as someone who loved Muhammad wa Muhammad. Things become really, really difficult at the time of death. And the last line, inshallah, as I said, whenever you have uh, free time, make sure you go and type in Dua Imam al-Hujjah alayhi salam, which begins with Allahumma rizqna tawfiq al -ta The Imam says, وَغْضُدْ أَبْصَارَنَا عَنِ الْفُجُورِ وَالْخِيَانَ Turn our sights away from haram. And that which is khiyana, betrayal. Sometimes you know, you know which we call it in our language, nadar or hasad. Sometimes people look with evil eyes to make things evil for other people, which is hasad. That is called khiyana. You know, that a brother of yours or a family, they have something that Allah has blessed them, blessed them with. If you want to remove that mercy from them or that blessing, what do people do? They look at them with evil eye. This is something that the Imam says in his dua, turn our sights away from those uh, sighting and from that which you have done haram. Lowering your gaze. And I end with this narration by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. Notice again how powerful one haram look could be. Rasulullah says, Nadratul haram سهم من سهام إبليس السام حرام لوك what حرام لوك or حرام looks in itself is a poisonous arrow from the arrows of Iblis why does Rasulullah say a poisonous arrow why not just an arrow if you were to be struck with an arrow on your shoulder what's the likelihood of you living very much you know you can live but if you were struck with an arrow that had poison in the same place and you have nowhere else to go to take that poison out, sometime, maybe a day, two, three days, you will die. Not because of the arrow, 
because of the poison that that arrow brought to you. Rasulullah says, Al-Nawratul Haram, one Haram look, has that poison in it that will kill your soul. You may have seen once, twice, but if there is no Tawbah, it will take you back. It will take you back, it will take you back until it consumes you. And then you will see that you are away from the path of Ahlul Bayt Why? Because of that one Haram look, it has costed you your distance from Imam Ali And uh, we end with this uh, story from a man who would read Ziyarah Jami'ah Kabira, and whenever he would read the Ziyarah Jami'ah, the Imam would come and see him. Ziyarah Jami'ah Kabira, he was so close to the Imam Ali salam. One day comes, he reads it, the Imam doesn't come to him. The second day comes, third day, fourth day, he doesn't, the Imam doesn't come to him. This man has become someone like the state of insanity. He had lost his mind. Why doesn't the Imam come to me? When he was approached by someone who asked him, why have you come from such a great stages in your life to where you are, where people call you Majnoon now, you're mad. He says, I used to look at the Imam whenever I wanted to meet him. One day in the market, a beautiful lady passes by. I did not lower my gaze from that. And for that reason, I was given herman from looking at the Imam <coughs> I couldn't look at the Imam Salam just for one haram look that I have done. And he became regretful for the rest of his life. One small sin like Imam Ali Ali Salam says, Kam min shahwati sa'atin awrathat nadaman tawila. One moment of your shahwa could give you a long, a long life regret. One moment. Let's be from amongst those people who learn from this. And be close to the Imam Ali Salam. Stay away from the Haram and do the Wajibat. We pray to Allah to grant us the Tawfiq to pave the path for our Imam Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Fajr Sharif by obeying Allah and staying away from the Haram of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah illati hallat bi fina'ik. عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام الله صلى الله عليه وسلم